Coach Clay Wenger for the Wadsworth Grizzlies. Welcome to the Ohio Cast podcast. Coach, how are we doing tonight? Hey, Zeb. Thanks for having me. I'm happy yeah, to be here. Doing good. Absolutely. I love doing having good. Grizzlies on the show. Whenever I get a Grizzly, I like to get a Grizzly. If you're going to be a bear, get, be a Grizz, is what my brother always tells me. For sure. Yeah. How's yeah. it going, man? How, how's everything going in your family? Doing good. Family's good. Uh, you know, two girls got them to bed tonight, five and three, and then, you know, all's good and hopping on here with you now, talking a little bit of wrestling. So, hey, everything's great. Couldn't all right, be all better. Right. Is everybody fully potty trained? Yeah, everyone's fully poly- potty trained. It's nice and easy right now. Uh, you know, my wife's at work. She's a nurse, so she's she's gone right now. So I I got the I got the, I'm in full control while we're here. So if anyone comes down, I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. Listen, <laughs> you can roll right into it and dad, dad, your kid up a little bit, you know, dad, dad, yeah. up and, and get him calmed down. I get it. Uh, yeah. You and I, last time we talked on a, like a show, I think your wife was coming home from the hospital and had to take everything off in the garage and was she i forget did you have a shower in the garage or something crazy like that i forget <laughs> no no we didn't have a shower in the garage but it's probably it was probably covid time zeb so yeah. you know she's you know at the hospital so she obviously you know is being a nurse too very you know protective of that situation so yeah close off in the garage get up to the shower shower and uh you know go from there but it's a lot different now not as not as crazy so um but she's work she works weird hour all the time weird hours so you know i have the girls you know at different times through the night or whatever it has to be but it's great you know i, I it's, that's what i i enjoy that part of it too you know you're at practice you're grinding weekends but when I could be with the girls, you know, during the week is, is great too. So I love it too, man. I love being with my kids. My son, Tommy yeah. and I took a, 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 a 10, 10 degree hike yesterday. It was 15 when we got back to the truck, <laughs> but there was wind. It's a little bit of wind and yeah. uh, we were hiking in and out of the river and, you know, you can get in the river. I can go about that deep in the river and, and his boots are swamped. If he goes that deep, <laughs> so I had to carry him a bunch. I had to lift him up and carry him. And uh, my, love my pant legs about to about mid shin to about almost mid shin. My pant legs froze. I bet they froze. It's cold to, right now. Yes, they, the, yeah. my pant legs froze to my boots. It was crazy, <laughs> but I got really good boots. I got these hiking boots, Solomon, dude. Yeah. You ever get a pair of Solomon's? They're like a three D GT, four D GTX, best. Hiking boot that I mean for like a regular for regular people like us, I'm sure the Everest yeah. people got way better hiking boots. But right, those are right. mountaineering boots where your ankle can't really move. Yeah. Um these ones you got some flexibility and they're like a six inch. Right. So they're pretty good. But man, I'll tell you what, I, they're not even paying me. They just kept my ankles and feet healthy. So shout out to Solomon. I appreciate that. Um so the girls are are are, are all potty trained. Are there more wangers potentially on uh. the way? Yeah, it's a good question, Zeb. I don't know. We don't you know, know. It's not. It's it's good to be in this place where, um, it's just kind. Of, it's getting kind of easy now. I don't know if I can backtrack into the baby stage again, but I'm all for it. So if the what, you know, two girls, obviously, I'd love to have a boy. <laughs> I, I wasn't even um, gonna bring it up, but you since you did, since yeah, you did. I, <laughs> it, it could happen, I, you know. You could be full Jim Andersy with three daughters, and I don't think that's. Yeah, it's, I think that's probably still the best thing in the world, man. Yeah, no, it's, it might be looking that way too. But um, funny is that I have a my um, my wife's sister married a Wadsworth Grizzly State Placer, Matthias Ollinger, and they just had they have a girl. Their oldest is a girl, but they have a boy too. Okay, and they live about they live a couple minutes a minute down the road. So of course they do, yeah. of course they do. That's how you guys roll. Yeah, so uh, that's kind of funny, you know. So his, he's, I mean, 
he's not a, the baby's not even one yet, but he's helped he helps with our youth program. He does the little K through three kids, and uh, I mean he's fantastic. You know, so you know they're into it. We there's some boys there, so man, I'd love to have my own, but I guess we'll see what comes with that. But I there's somebody really there. That we can... I don't know if you're really in control no. of that. I'm just gonna be <laughs> honest with you. I know yeah, I wasn't. I know I wasn't. And <laughs> I, you know, whatever they gave me, I took it. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with what I got. And uh, yeah, I know my wife is. Yeah, like, you got uh, some boys, have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just how it works, and you know, it just yeah. how it goes. I mean, it's man. all good. luck of the draw. Yeah, yeah you got. I think you got lucky too, right? Yeah, hundred percent lucky. I love it. It's fun. It's different. You know, it's nice to come home. You know, when when I get home, the talk isn't wrestling. It's you know, my, my wife's like, hey, you know, move move past the wrestling. And so it's a little humbling sometimes, you know, hey, come on, we're going to gymnastics, we're going to this and that, whatever it is, you know, and that and that's fun too. So um I'm happy. So what I, you know, if the boys to come, great. If not, I got plenty of them at the high school to deal with. So Correct. Uh it, it's fun. If you need any pointers on a third girl, if you have a third girl, if you do happen to have another child, uh, talk to Coach Haverdell because he has three daughters. Yes, he does. Yeah, he's got three daughters. Has we one of his daughters. One of his daughters is a really good gymnast because Braxville is like the best yeah. program in the state of Ohio. She's on yeah. that gymnastics team. So, I, yeah, yeah, we've talked. Are, you yeah. know, Todd's a great guy, man. I got he's nothing but great things to say. Probably yeah, your no. is he your friend of me? Yeah, no, we we Friend get along great. Me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we we love we love to compete. We love yes. to compete, and it you know it gets heated up, but we have fun too, especially in the off season. You know, he does a lot at Fargo for our guys and stuff. So he he's a great guy. He runs a great program. Um, yeah, love the guy. But it's yeah. fun to it's fun to get after it again. We see each other a lot, so it's fun to you're in the you same know, conference. You're in the same, same conference. conference. Right? Yeah. How did that go this year? It was good. We just had this uh, past. They won. They beat us. Um, it was a good battle, though. It was a fun. It was a fun tournament. Good battle, and um, I mean, on our end, you know, he still won, and and they have a great team, great guys. But we closed the gap. I mean, when in our duel with them, they they I mean they really put it to us and embarrassed us a little bit, honestly, in front of in our own gym, and we hyped the event up, and you know, we had you know, walk, run out music. We had lights, we had smoke, you know, it was, it was good though. Good experience for the guys on both ends. And it was fun. And he always does a good job when it's his turn. You know, we, we wrestle up on his stage. So uh, they put it to us though. You know, they, they really beat us up and we closed the gap. We closed the gap this week. And I would say, and in some situations and some matches. So it was good though. You know, we, we got, We'll see him at the districts, uh, maybe the state duels. You know, we have to beat a good Perry team this weekend. Um, and then maybe, you know, hopefully make the state duel finals if we can do that. But they're they're tough as well. And maybe see him there and see him at districts and then obviously state. So a lot, so, lot, of, oppor- lot of Brexville, Wadsworth wrestling. So if, if correct me if I'm wrong, you can see a, a, a you're in competition with them up to six times. Am I getting that right? Yeah. Iron Man. Yep. Iron Man. Uh, the duel. Yep. The, the uh the the conference, yep. district, state, and is there one more? Potential state duels. State and state. If, so I'm right. It's six. If if we make the state duels and they do two. I mean, it, it seems like every year you're two, you know, three, you're usually two, three seasons. Yeah, what right. I in so the last two years, it, it's, it's a been semi-final two, three, right? matchup. Yeah. It's, it's you there, beat them so. two years ago. They beat you last year. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. They beat I us last that. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's always I, a good duel. I called it, both it, those fun. duels. I called both yeah. those duels and they were great duels. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they're great. They're always great duels, except the last one. They, they, they brought it that they hammered us down a little bit, but it's still, a good rivalry and, and fun. So do you think you'll we'll ever see. get, a, you think you'll ever get away with from, do you think you'll ever get away from wrestling Braxville so many freaking times? I don't know. I, I don't think so. You know, I think we both like going to the Ironman and, 
you know, you obviously have, you know, that's just part of the, the schedule. And then, you know, our duel is always is good, you know, for wrestling. I think it's, you know, being up on their stage, we hype it up in our gym. It's just a good rivalry that I don't think we want to stop either, either of us. And then state duels are what they are. If we both make it, you know, we run into each other there and then, um, I mean, district state, I mean, there's nothing you can do, you know? So. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, why would you shy away from that? That's not how you become a perennial top 50 program, right. top 25 program, which you guys are. You're in the top 50 in the high school super rankings every year. Yep. Yep. And, 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 and that's what you strive for. You have ultimately you strive for a division one state title. I know that um, mm-hmm. you were on that all time. Great team. Yep. Um, in, yep. in 2010. Did I get it right? Was it 10 or 11? Yep. 10. You're 10. Right. I got it right. I covered it. I cu- I remember yes, uh, did. my guy, Ian McCutcheon called all the matches. Coach G yep. jumped off the freaking stage. <laughs> I couldn't did. believe it. This guy needed a new knee and a hip. This guy's jumping <laughs> off the stage. Probably, probably felt it the next morning whenever the yeah. celebration wore off. Right. He didn't but- care. After the, at that care. point, though, yeah. what a team! <laughs> what a freaking team! It was a what, great team. What a great listen! Yeah. That tournament, besides Perrysburg, I think was the closest D one state tournament, and yeah. it was the most that two teams had ever scored yeah. up until last year. It was well, yeah, I knew it was for a while. I didn't. What you I didn't realize score? till last what'd, year. What'd you guys yeah. score? Well, how many did you uh, score? I don't know, but 138 yeah. or 145 or something like that. Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, I want to find that, that like, out. I'm gonna look that up. I want to know that now. That's like, because yeah. you know, we we can do this stuff on the fly, man. But wow, what a what a what an unbelievable yeah, thing, tournament. man. It's unreal. I love. Yeah, thinking I mean, about you it. know, we, we. Yeah, I mean, we had you know Kagan in the finals, Squire, Loudon, Brad Squire, Caleb Busen. Nick Tavanello, Ben Bazzelli. So, I mean, it was, um, it, it yeah, it was a good, uh, I mean, and Ed's had an amazing team as well with their guys. So, I mean, it was, it was fun. You know, it's, uh, it's still. Oh, oh, never mind. I'm totally wrong. It was 172 it points. Yeah. And then they had, they had 167.5. So, up until yeah. last year, that was the most. Yeah. Cause last year, you know, you had they had you had one seventy two. They had one sixty seven point five. It was super similar last year, actually. I think ads had but, like one. I think ads had uh, one seventy five, and I think Perrysburg okay. might have had like one sixty eight. Yeah. Let me actually yeah, look that, that up. That was a good race. What yeah. a race, right? Yeah, gonna, that I'm was a look fun at last race. year. I'm gonna look because yeah. that was twenty twenty two. I mean, what a just unbelievable freaking race, man! Unreal. And then here, let's see. We're looking at it now. D1 last year, individual results is what we're looking for. 170. Yeah, I mean, what, so you so St. Ed's is the highest individual runner-up score ever with 167.5. Yeah. Perrysburg had 165.5. Wow. And then St. Ed's yeah. had 176 last year. Wow. For to win. Right there. Yeah. Right there. Wow. So they did. They you beat them by, or St. Ed's would have beat them by two points as yeah. a runner up. That is the second highest runner up finish ever. St. Ed's when you guys beat them was the first highest number one finish ever. Wow. 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 That's incredible. That, so it so is. last year's last year stacked up. It did. It yeah. And that up. was a great team race. Yeah. I mean, great that was team race. Actually. Watch. What what sealed it for you? Was it Tavanello? Yeah, I mean, you know, you had Loud had Loud and Gordon had the big pen he, with he, Mark he pinned Martin. Mark Martin with a head to head. And then you had another head to head, which I forgot to mention at Perrysburg, and I got a little crap for it, Zeb, because I was a little bit on the fly there. Brad Squire beat Anthony Salupo, which was a head to head. So that didn't do it? That didn't do it yet. Wow. Um, yeah, and then we had I don't I think they had Nick Solzer in there that won a state title at yep. probably six 70, seventy one or, or sixty. Sixty. I think. Yep, yep. Then we had Caleb Buse in the finals. He, he lost, lost to a tough kid from Yep. Um Centerville kid, I believe. Miller. Yep. And then Tavanello beat a Centerville kid for to to seal the deal in overtime. 
Um, another Centerville kid. I, I'm not sure. I forget the name. You would know better. But And then Ben Bazzelli was kind of icing on the cake with beating uh, Billy Vaughn. I think Cherry on top. Yeah. I mean, and then, I mean, those guys wrestled, like we just talked about, about seven times that year. You know, <laughs> I remember G brought you guys when I think you were a freshman or sophomore to Eric Burnett's out in the garage. Yeah. Remember that? The we barn? did. Yep. Out at the barn. I yep. think I tortured Eat. you guys in the apple orchard, didn't I? I was just going to say that the apple <laughs> orchard. <laughs> Danny Mitchiff brought it up to me the other day. Did he? I, I don't know if he brought it up Man. or I brought it up. I was like, as Cody Kamara <laughs> came up to me, I did that the SIUE deal dual yeah. for Kent State. Yeah, I watched um, that. I watched your interviews. Yeah, yeah. Really good. Anyhow, um, Coach Anderson immediately came up and insulted me about my facial hair and my hair, <laughs> which is fine. I get it. Um, and then Danny was like, Danny hated me forever, which he rightfully so should have, because I used to torture him in the apple orchard. And I mean, not, <laughs> yeah. I, mean I made him do bear crawls. I made you guys do bear crawls. <laughs> In the do, and I remember Logan yeah. Steber at one point looked at me. He's like, "Are you serious?" I was like, "Yup, I'm serious." <laughs> and everybody did it. And it that was, was my of- that was going to be my follow up right when you said we came to Burnett's for that that weekend. I was going to say that that freaking apple orchard. <laughs> that was. Do, so do you know why we were in the apple orchard? No, one <laughs> of Eric's kids. Was on the road and I ran the run. I did the run. I ran with him and I did everything. Yeah. And um, one of Eric's kids was like wandering in traffic, and I'm <laughs> screaming at him. And Donna Pycraft came out as I was like, "Get out yeah. of the road!" And a car <laughs> zoomed by him. And after that, oh man, my. we went to the Apple Orchard because no, no, Jim Pycraft wasn't going to come run us over with a tractor. Yeah, because I know previous Burnett camps, we would run the road. We ran the road, and I was doing yeah. the road one morning. And um, yeah, I, I, I uh, dude, I, I mean, I <laughs> couldn't live. You know, what I mean, I couldn't live with something like that, man. That would be terrible. No, and there's I mean, not any control. Yeah, and there's not any control. And you know, it was like a seventh or eighth grade kid, and I was like, dude, we can't be on the road anymore. Yeah, he's like, all there's right, a busy well, road there, especially yeah, that. Yeah, Indian right, Hollow right, Road, right. dude. Yeah. Indian Hollow Road, and people would fly down. It's a country road. I live on a country road now, and 45 is our speed limit. And where I lived in O'Car, uh, Martin, Ohio, where, where we grew up, um, people would fly down at 70, 80 mile an hour, and it's a flat country road as far as the eye can see. Indian Hollow is not like that. There's some turns and stuff like that. It was, it was, that. It was terrifying, but. What a great camp, though. You guys, you know, Coach G was like, I think we can do it with this team. When we were at that camp, yeah, he wholeheartedly believed he could do it with this team. Yeah. And I love seeing belief like that in people. Yeah. I like it when Scotty Burnett tells me it. I like it yeah, when yeah. you tell me it. I like it when Todd Haverdale tells me it or, or, or Coach McBurney tells me it or whoever or Coach Van Gundy. I think guys genuinely believe that they can do what you guys did in 2010 and knock St. Ed's off. And, you know, Maslin Perry under Dave Riggs did it in 2014. Yeah. yeah. I love to see the confidence because St. Edwards is the standard. You know, I was there this weekend. Yeah, yeah. The it sophomore is. class is bananas for St. Edward. Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, I, I mean, I'm not speaking for the other programs, and I know they – but that 2010 team – brings the belief to our guys now you know they believe they they can they see it on the walls they were in youth at that time and you know having it and I'm sure Perry is, is the same way when they they did it and I mean all these guys they they've had amazing you know runs and stuff so I, I just know for us personally that 2010 team um, shows that it can be done and, and I think they as kids they they see that they know it's been done and they, they believe it too. So it was a huge piece of our program. Yeah, it was great and everything, but it's carried on now for a while to, to keep that belief. And, you know, those kids know that they can do it. And, and we're lucky to have these guys that come back in the room and, you know, talk to these guys and stuff, you know, and, and they're not just nowhere, you know, they're, they're around, they're coming in and, you know, sharing those stories and, and, you know, how to get it done. So 
our guys are, they believe it, you know, they, they know it can be done. And it's a lot of work, you know, that you got, Ed, like you said, Ed's and Dublin Kaufman, Brexville, Perry, Perrysburg is, it's tough, but you know, they, it, it can be done and they believe that too. So it's fun. What's crazy is how you guys come out of the districts determines a lot, you know, like the way I look yeah. at that is the way you come out of the districts really has a lot to do with it. And when it's Maslin, Perry, Brexville, Wadsworth in a district with a host of other really tough teams, yeah, I feel like that's the toughest district to come out of, in my opinion. And I know in Division Two, Graham gets a huge shot in the arm, and not that Graham's not great, but they get a huge shot in the arm by being in that district that they're in where they can get 12, sometimes right. 13 kids down to the state tournament. And as you and I know, it's a numbers game. Yeah. Right. It is. We yeah. know that, you know, Perrysburg's got high end, top end guys. We know they had six finalists last year. We know you had two champs last year, right? Like we know you guys got guys, but ultimately how many push can you push through to the state right. tournament through your district? And when you're coming out of Northeast Ohio, I don't think it's a secret. It's the toughest and has been the toughest forever, forever yeah. when it was the men or meat grinder. Right. And then they kind of divided that men or meat or grinder, meat grinder up in or late nineties, two thousands. And then they started pushing St. Ed's over to, uh, Perrysburg yeah. at that district. And, um, that's hard. Where did you guys qualify yeah. out of your senior year Clay, or your junior year? Yeah, that was, um, we were in, uh, Lorraine. Lorraine? That is. Yeah, we were in Lorraine. Was that, that your district? Ashland or Lorraine. I, I can't remember exactly, but it was either it, – it, I could be mixing them up. It could have been my senior year, Lorraine, junior year. I think it might have been Ashland now that I'm thinking it out. So I, I'm not sure what how that district went or why we went out there. But then I know quickly after that I went to Kent, came back, and we were in Perrysburg one district really then, really yeah yeah we were uh young time michael north luke boffman joey boffman those names they were young um freshmen sophomore in, in in high school at the time um we were in perrysburg we we wow. had a district out there so and then we got from there on out we've been at north canton Menor, it was at Menor one year, but it was the same district just in Menor. But, um, yeah, I mean it's it, it's a tough district with Perry and uh, Brexville. Aurora Aurora's now Division One. That's it's, right, they moved up, didn't they? Yeah, Louisville. Wow. I mean, they they threw some. Wait, got, wait, did you say Louisville moved up? They didn't move up, did they? Did they not? No, they didn't move up. I believe they they're were going to. And, yeah. I, I got to check on that. That's yeah. important to know because I don't believe they moved up. They did not. They did You're not. right. I they believe didn't. they're actually – they're still D2 because – what is yeah, Hope, they were Hope, in the discussion, Hope Arts, they're 50-punder, right? Yeah, they yeah, were in the they're, discussion early. They're D2 still. Yeah, they are too. Yeah. What's wild about that – Yeah. What's wild is that that's on enrollment. It's on boys' enrollment, and it's done in two-year cycles, right? Yeah. Because Kent, Kenston just dropped down to D2. Yeah, and Kent I was talking – yeah, and I was talking to Jeremy Johnson at the league because they're in our league too, Aurora, and he said Aurora is just going to keep getting bigger. So they're well, not yeah. going to be – It is. They'll never be D2 even, again. Yeah, they're, he said never again. So, well, And I think Kenston is – Kenston was always over by two boys. All those years they were D1 for the last decade or whatever, it was yeah. two boys. It was two, three boys. Or one year, listen, the last two years when they were D1, Kenston was at the number. Wow. They were the minimum, smallest number. Yeah, so, they have a good program. It's kind of wild. Yeah, they have a great tradition, actually, and it's it's going to get back better now because Jeff Farney's doing a great job with our youth, and I, I think they're doing a good job. But, yeah, they're one of those. And then O'Carver. Oh, Carver was always a tweener. They're D3 yeah. now. And then for my whole, uh, my brother Chad, whose son is a senior this year, my brother Chad's junior year, he wrestled in the Division Three state tournament and then it didn't place. And then the next year he won D2. Wow. And his son is a two-time qualifier right now in D3. 
And then Owen. he'll be going for – yeah, Owen is going for his uh, third trip to state in D3. So it's like it's – they were always kind of like what, what uh, Kenston is to D3. And then Edison yeah. was another one, Mylan Edison. Yeah, they're tough. They're they similar, a... real similar to O'Carver in that they're teetering on the edge all the time, two or three boys away from gump, bumping up back up to two. So it's it's wild, man. It's wild to see the shift in demographics and where populations yeah. are moving, and it's it's just wild to see. And then um, it, 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 it's interesting for me as well because you know my kids could either be in D one or D two. We're probably never going to be a D three. Which which is fine, and I get that, you know, because I never competed at that level, and I get it though. I mean, but if O'Carver with Ian's team, they would have yeah. they would have ran into Monroeville, and it would have come down to O'Carver having numbers over them having their four guys. And they had a good team. That was a good team. Yeah, they were runner up to Graham. Yeah, they yeah, were runner up to Graham. So, and then they had like four finalists one year, so they would have been right there with with Monroeville in D three. So that's just how it goes, though, man. You know. And, but you can't do in D3 what you can do in D2 and D1. In D3, you can take four or five guys down. Yeah. And you can win a team title. You just can't do that in D1. No, no, not at all. I mean, in multiple placers, right? It, it, the, the, the top teams have multiple guys on the podium. If it's not in the finals, they're, I mean, it's a big number, I would say. You know, I think we placed seven last year, maybe wow. eight, and we were fourth. You oh, know, and smokes. two two champs. Two. Do you champs. know who your Do you know who your biggest fan was last year? Who <laughs> on on Sunday night? It's St. Ed. The St. Edward Eagles. <laughs> yeah. I got some. Uh, I got some thank yous yeah. after that. Wow, well, I we, mean, we matched up with two Perrysburg guys. If and those if they flip those results, I think they win. Yeah. I do too. I I know. I mean, I got wild. we got some thank you. So um you know, yeah, that was crazy. And I love both those are two great programs. So I mean, we were just kind of focused on ourselves, I guess at that point, you know, but jo- Joy beat Avalos and then Ernest beat Denkins. Correct? Denkins. Yeah. Yeah. And Ernest and Dinkins are both going to Campbell. They're going year. to Campbell. Shout out to the yeah. hump. Roll humps. Go Campbells. Yeah. Roll hump. Yeah. Uh, that, that's wild to think about it. But is it ever getting old, getting kind of, you guys pick each other apart. You guys pick each other yeah. apart at the state tournament. And to the yeah. point, what you guys did to Perrysburg, and you, like you said, you're worried about yourself. You're not like, oh, go Eagles. Yeah. You just want your guys to win state titles. It's not this like yeah. we got a garage yeah. with Perrysburg thing. Nothing like that. No. It's, I, I love I love Coach Burnett. Yeah, you, you know I mean you know that. So yeah, I mean that that's just I didn't even think about it. You know I wasn't even at that point thinking of it till people started saying something. But yeah, I mean we were just it was about those two at that at that moment. You know and um you know which is unfortunate for the other people, but. You know, that's just kind of how we were looking at it at that time. What's wild to me is, you know, I looked at you guys at Mommy Bay and I was like, okay, they got, they got a shot. They got a shot. You know, everyone talks about, you know, St. Ed's, Perrysburg, Brexville, Perry, Kaufman, uh, LaSalle. You can never count LaSalle out. They seem to just, no. they're, they're, they're qualifying out of a district that doesn't have the competition yep. yours does. Yeah. Well, they'll bring numbers, yeah. Right, and they bring numbers. They always seem to punch guys through who I've – I'm like, I've never even heard of this kid. He's a, fr- a sophomore. Yeah. And they got a tough schedule. I think they do Powerade and a couple other things. But do you guys cannibalize each other? Do you guys yeah. do you guys pick each other apart, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, we, I think we see each other a lot. and um, But I, I feel like that's probably how you got to do it, right? You got to wrestle the best to, to beat them. You know, and and it might take some losses along the way. You might have big wins along the way, and um. But uh, you know, uh, for me, I think it's what you it's what you have to do. We got to wrestle Perrysburg and Russell Eds and Russell Brexville, and you know, it, I think it gets to be a lot sometimes, but it's okay. I mean, you know, you look at college wrestling; those guys hit each other a lot too. You know, and and the big the big dogs do, and think that's just how it is and you gotta you know make adjustments from every match and 
you know, get better, you know, even if you win or lose, you gotta, you gotta get better from every opportunity. So I think it's a good thing. We push each other. I mean, I can't, you know, it, it fuels the fire for our guys to, you know, get beat by Brexel last weekend. You know, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not where we need to be yet and we got time to do it. So we'll see how, you know, wrestling Perry this weekend is another challenge. And Jesus, Pete, we'll see. Never we'll end, dude. Never we don't have any downtime. Jesus, no. Pete. Oh, yeah. Smokes. That's what I worry about. Am I doing, you know, are we doing, is it too much or not? But, you know, our guys love it. They, they're, they're competitors. So, I mean, the room is good atmosphere. It's, Guys are confident. They're they're getting better. They're so it's good. I think it's great. I love having these kind of teams that that push us. That every week we might have a great week, like at Maumee, and then the next week we're losing to Brexville. So it, you know it's it's over now, guys. You know back to work. So it, it's good. I think it's great. I, I love it, and you know we'll be battling again in in March at the state tournament. I'm sure. You guys uh, put a lot of a lot of D one guys out there, right? You have a lot of guys that go to D one wrestling programs. Um, yeah. You and I talked, and I felt like you and I personally, Clay Clay yeah. Wanger and Zeb Miller, were yeah. probably more like D two guys, yeah. right? Like I feel yeah. like my ability was level wise. I know that I beat D two All Americans every year when we would yeah. duel D two teams. But and you went <laughs> to Kent State and you wrestled behind my nephew Ian. Yeah. Um, and it was just tough, and I'm sure you wouldn't change anything about it, and I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't no. have what I have now with my my wife and kids. I had I not gone to Kent State, but um, do you ever feel like that kids are almost out kicking their coverage, and kids are trying to go up to a level that they maybe aren't suited to go to? Do you ever feel that way with Wadsworth, or do you feel like it doesn't matter? We're running our room like a D1 room. Our weight program's a D1 D1 weight program. Our guys are ready, whether their ability level is not up to par, they'll figure it out and we've prepared them. Do you feel that way or how do you feel about that? Yeah, no, no, Zeb, I'm with you. I, I, like, like you said, um, you know, I think it would have been a better move for me personally, but like you said, I wouldn't change it. Um, you know, uh, being behind Ian and learning from him and learning from some of the guys that can't, Kilgore, Bedleon, all those, you know, the midshift, the midshifts, like, F- fantastic can never would never change any of that but you know i that's what i think i think what it comes to is you know all of us even you know Brett, everybody you know the, the those top teams are running their room they're running their program like a d1 college program and these guys go to these visits and they see similarities in that and you know i think it's a comfort thing and they say hey that's what i'm doing now i mean it's a lot more you know and that's something they're gonna they're gonna find out d1 wrestling in college is a lot more than um in in, in high school but <laughs> it's a, there's it's a, you know, it's a they, lot they, more <laughs> yeah oh yeah, man I think, they, I think they you know and they see the people in front of them that went to these programs but you know i, I think you know as a coach i try to help direct them as best as i can in the the area that they need to go, you know, because it's too hard. It's too hard to go to a program and put all that work in and, and not get on the mat for five, four or five years, you know. Yeah. You want to compete. You want to wrestle, you know. So, uh, you know, and, and I think I learned that myself. But, you know, I try my best to, to direct them in the right way and get them to the right program that fits them the best and, you know, and they're young too, and you know they're they're finding their way, and they're you know what's best for them too. So, you know we're proud of all our college guys, and we got guys doing great things, and you know, and it, it it's fun. It's fun to see them at the next level as they, you know, keep growing in the sport. Right now, you have I want to say three. Is it three or four guys committed to D one programs? Yeah, um, we got yeah Jackson Joy to Cornell. Which he's only a junior. Yeah. Chris Ernest to Campbell. Um, Cohen Grimm to Buffalo. And our uh those are our D ones. And then a D two, Nick Humphreys. He was six in the state last year. He's a senior, 144. He's going to Newberry College. Is he going to Newberry in South Carolina? Yeah. 
yeah, he he loved it out there. So that's nice. where he's going. Yeah. Nice. So he, see, that's, that's good. good. That's what we're talking about. Hey, like yeah. a guy, you know, he's a, a, a six in the state in D one, gonna have yep. a chance to make a run at it again this year. But but knowing <clears> that, uh, hey, maybe that's my level. I think that's a good level. And then you know, Buffalo's a good max school. And yep. obviously Cornell, we can't. I can't say a a single bad thing about Cornell. I mean, unless I'm talking about that uh, they're the smartest Ivy League school that doesn't know how to add up a score to a match. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's when Ian <laughs> lost to the guy. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll never forget. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, obviously uh, Campbell was on the rise. Uh, they do a great job. They do. Coach Mahalik, Coach Sentis does a great job down there. Do. Uh, Coach Gonzer, so good guys in the Southern Conference. But um, yeah. do you feel like you were destined to be the head coach of the Wadsworth Grizzlies? You're born and raised Wadsworth. Did yeah. your dad wrestle at Wadsworth? He did. My dad, um, my dad did not. He went to Copley. My uncle wrestled for Copley. Okay. Um, my grandpa was the head coach at Elyria. So he know he won a state title at Elyria in nineteen seventy something three or four. Yeah, great. He's really good friends with Glenn Burnett, Eric's uncle, um, which is cool. So then my uncle wrestled there, but all those people then went to Kent. My grandpa was a MAC champ at Kent. I didn't know that. Are you serious? Yeah, my uncles both wrestled at Kent. My dad wrestled at Kent, and then. I mean, I went to Kent. My mom went to Kent. My grandma went you to Kent. You wrestled at Kent. You were like, you were just yeah. acting like you didn't wrestle at Kent. Yeah, listen, no, I did. I was my just favorite, my favorite, for... my favorite Clay Wenger story of grit and toughness yeah. was the day I came in and you had the toothache wrap on the, oh, you had the, you had the gable wrap and then you had the toothache love wrap. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What happened that time with the, we've talked about this before a, a bunch. Yeah. What happened? Why did you have the D? What was going on? <clears throat> I think it. I think it was Ian, but I don't remember every second of it. But we were doing. <laughs> we were rust. We were scrapping. We were getting after it. And I think I got double egged into a one of the machines on the side of the the room, you know, and my face hit the machine. I think he was, you know, hitting a double or something, and I kind of was bailing out, so I kind of turned. And my face went into the machine. And then uh, I just remember I was on my knees. I was spitting my teeth out. <laughs> I was <laughs> bleeding. Um, so I had to get my teeth fixed. My front teeth had to get fixed. They had to shave, a, shave my head. I had stitches up my head. I remember your head looked all I love crazy. It. I was like, oh, my God. God. And, hey, you know, I it was good. It was all good. I probably back at it a day or two later, you know, whatever you, you were. I was like, dude, just maybe take a break or something. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, though? You do you, Clay. I know yeah, you're gonna I loved it. Do you feel like you were destined to be the head wrestling coach for the Wadsworth Grizzlies, though? Yeah, I do. I, I want it. I want it. I don't know why or how, but I, I wanted I knew I wanted to be a coach at a young age and um obviously I wanted to be there. So um, I did. And then, that you know, that's why I went right away after Kent to be with G. I was with G for like two or three years and he kind of, you know, taught me the way and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's there, you know, and then it worked out. He, he knew when he wanted to be done once it was right. And, you know, we went from there and he's still a huge help and, you know, still a part of the program. He helps the youth and, you know, he lets me do my thing, though. He doesn't, you know, whenever I need help, he'll obviously help. But, um, you know, he lets me, you know, do what I got to do. But he's a huge, huge help with coming to, with the youth. He's at the middle school when he needs to be. I mean, he's all he's probably working harder now than than he did. He's doing like the youth and middle school all right after school to, you know, 830 at night. So, um. You know, but he brings great people around. That's what he's really good at. And his alumni come back, and now he's – the kids he coached have kids now that are in the youth program. So he's loving it. He, he's enjoying it, and I, I'm grateful to have him. And, 
you know, his alumni that are back now, they're a big part of the coaching staff at the, at the youth and it's huge. So it's fun. It's all connected. We're all connected. That's what's fun about Wadsworth that we all know each other. We've all, we have a lot of stories and good memories and it's fun to, you know, share that together. So is your wife from Wadsworth? She is. Did you graduate I, with her? I did. I, I've dated her since I was in ninth grade. Oh my gosh. She's a Wadsworth Grizzly and she went to Kent too. And, um, you know, we live five minutes from each other. So, and our parents still live in those house, those houses. So we're lucky for them though. They help with the kids a lot, especially when she's working the hospital and then I'm at wrestling. So, you know, just, a, it's all good. It's, it's just lucky for a lot of people make it work. You guys have had some absolute freaks come through Wadsworth. Um, Bobby Jones is the one I think of the most. Yeah. Two-time state champ. Played football at Penn State. And then mm -hmm. played in the NFL for a couple seasons, right? Seasons, yep. You got a guy like that. That was G's first state champ, I want to say. It was. It was his first state champ. Yep. And then you, you had a guy before him who was a state runner-up. Uh, Hendricks, right? Hendricks. He wrestled at Oklahoma State for and a couple then, years. NCAA, NCAA finalist for Ashland. Yep. yep. And did, he, did he pass away? He did not. He was in a really bad incident. Yeah, he was He was cooking something at the house. No way. Long day at work. You know, he works a hard uh, – he works on the railroad. Okay. So he threw a pizza in the oven and, you know, went on the recliner, fell asleep. No woke way. up in the hospital days later. So no way of them saved him. That's yeah. wild. And then, yeah, it was great. He's doing great now. He's so he's, good guy. Does he live in Wadsworth? He doesn't. He's, he's more South from okay. us. Um, the, but the, he, he's connected. You know, he always touches base. Great guy. Uh, another one, Larry Kaufman's a big one for G. He's still teacher at Wadsworth. He was an NCAA runner-up for Ashland. Then I okay. think he was also third. But he's more um, maybe early 90s. Yeah. You know, one of G's I, teams to finally. Yeah. Hendricks get, was like 94, 94 or 95, I want to say. In yeah. High school. Yep. Yep. And then he started at Oklahoma State, ended at Ashland, NCAA finalist at heavyweight. Yep. And then is Bobby Jones still around? Yeah. He, his kids. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's. Just down the road from me, he he doesn't <clears throat> come in the room a ton, but you know he's still around. He's connected. He comes in, talks to the kids. Um, his his son's a really good fo good football player at Wadsworth. His daughter's a good basketball player. So athletes, you know, good. I'm athletes. not shocked. I'm not shocked. I'm no. not gonna lie to you. He can't be. Yeah, I mean, and he's he's about six five, isn't he? Yeah. He's tall, and, he's tall and big and just a big, yeah, huge, big massive guy. guy. Tough guy, tough. Just, you know, and, he, and he was very involved with the 2010 team. Okay. You know, that, Bobby he was, was really he did weight. Did he do the weights? Is he like a strength and conditioning? And that what he yeah, was Yeah, more conditioning. But he got in there and, you know, he was scrapping with Pizzelli and Tavanello. Okay. Um. So, yeah. He, I mean, he wrestled even, you know, then he went at Penn State. He wrestled. His last year there and was an NCAA qualifier. That is ridiculous. Yeah, then that I that is he, absurd. I know. Never didn't wrestle for three years or four years, and then said, "Hey, I'll, I'll try it out. I'll do it." And he then qualified he made the for the NCAA tournament. That's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that is so yeah, hard to do, out. dude. That's hard to do. Oh, it's not. It's not easy. I mean, that speaks to his oh. freakness. That speaks to his like athletic prowess. I think. Yeah. That is yeah. unreal. I did not know he qualified. I knew he'd like wrestled the season or whatever, yeah. but I thought it was like, yeah, yeah I wrestled a couple of dual meets, maybe do the big 10. He qualified. Yeah. That's, he qualified. That is wild, Clay. Um, it did is. you coach Mr. Ohio in football who wrestled at Wadsworth? I did. I did. I was with him for maybe <clears throat> probably his sophomore, junior, senior year. That's when I helped. V was still the head coach, but. I was in there every day with him. So great. He's going, he's playing professional football in Italy now. No way. Are you serious? Yeah. Where did he go to Elon? Elon? Elon. And he was a quarterback there 
you know, he got, he tore his ACL one year, but yeah, he, he met a girl. She's a, uh, from Brazil and nice wealthy family. <laughs> they both moved out to Italy and he's going to play professional football out there. So just, just saw him. Re- he was at the Brexville duel and he was no disappointed. And yeah. <laughs> good, it's, good dude. Oh, great family. It's Boffman, right? That's Joey Boffman. No, that's, uh, that's Joey. Yep. That's Joey. It is Joey Boffman. So Joey Boffman was Mr. Ohio in football for the Wadsworth Grizzlies. Yep. Went to Elon, played quarterback. Now he's going to play professional football in Italy with yep. his Brazilian, beautiful, rich girlfriend. Wow. <laughs> must, must be tough. Must be. Sounds like life hasn't it. been kind to him. He was a four-time state placer for you or three? He was. Four. Four. And they were all Fifth. at middle and upper weights, right? Yep. Fifth, second, second, third. Jesus, Pete. Yeah. Unreal, yep. man. It was tough. Wow. Life's been good was... to that guy. I like that for that guy. He is. I he like was... that. That's awesome. Ah, uh, <laughs> you know, you've coached the Mr. Ohio in football. And are, is this your fourth or fifth year as the head coach? This is five. This Going is on five. Four. Okay. Yeah. So five years. And you leave, you know, a legend, Coach Gramulia. He was your coach. You know, had his first state champ with Bobby Jones. Won them one of the most legendary state and competitive state tournaments in history, where you guys knocked off, uh, you know, St. Edwards in the, the probably the greatest, the co greatest, you know, if you want to consider the Perrysburg one last year, probably the co greatest tournament ever. I mean, obviously, you got to be biased and say, no, the Wadsworth win was the greatest, but yeah, um, how do you follow up a legend? Yeah, I mean, learned a lot from him and you know, kind of keeping the keeping it rolling, you know, keeping the, you know, keeping people around, you know, like I said, the alumni coming back, keeping people within the program that have done it. And I think it keeps kids believing that it can be done. You know, when Mr. Football comes in the room, that's exciting for those guys or, you know, Michael North, you know, wrestling at Maryland, having a good year, you know, Noah Boffman had a good career at Cornell. Those guys are in and out all the time. And, um, you know, that, that's just, a, that's huge. And I, I think that gives those guys the belief. So I think it's just keeping the relationships, keeping the, keeping the people around that, you know, got the program rolling and um, but it's just fun. It's fun for me to be, keep seeing those guys. And now that their kids are in the program, it's, it's just fun. A lot of connections, relationships and keeps guys believing. And, and G started that and, we just we just keep keep it going and keep building on it. Keep sending guys to colleges and getting them out there in the division one level, D two, D three, whatever it is. And they come back. Those guys see the hey, it can be done here. Let's do it. And you know it's kind of expected of them now a little bit. And so many guys have done it. These guys feel like hey, you know even Nick Humphreys is a good example. I didn't I had no I did not think he'd wrestle in college. I wasn't sure he would place at the state tournament last year, and he did. You know, it was kind of like, hey, I, I must I expect to do it here. So he did it. He he loves it now. He's going to college. He's going to have a good – go to a good school, and, you know, he has great family and is going to hopefully have a great senior year here. So the relationships are, I think, key and keeping the alumni around. Reese, uh, your heavyweight – won the uh, Fargo Heavyweight Cadet Championships in freestyle, correct? Yeah, he did. How important is the off-season wrestling to guys from Wadsworth? Huge. Got to <clears throat> gotta have that, you know. And, and again, the success they see is makes more guys want to be a part of it. And that's just your leadership of your elite guys like – Jackson Joy, Chris Ernest, um, Aaron Reese, you know, those guys, they, they got to, they, sometimes kids need to see it. They need to see the success and what follows that. And, um, you know, people are going to piggyback on that. We had a ton of kids this, year, this summer, this spring, do freestyle, which was huge. So, you know, just the leaders, the leaders got to keep leading and lead by example and, you know, Coaches can say what they want to, but at the end of the day, they're going to go, you know, my buddy's there 
well, I'm going to go too. And I think that's been a, a big thing for us. Our leaders are leading. We're teaching them how to lead and be leaders and um, they're doing a good job at it. So off season's huge. I think that's where you know, the difference is made, you know, and everybody's wrestling November to March. Who's, you know, what are you doing on the other time? And, and I think that's kind of what we preach to our, our guys, you know, everyone's practicing three to five, you know, what are we doing beyond that point uh, from November to March? So I think that's key. And our guys are buying into that, and that's um, that's huge for us. Looking at Aaron Reese, how many times have him and Fockler uh, met up this year? That the first one was the GIT, and and Aaron beat him. Um, I think I think it's I think it's two one Reese right now, and and, and lifetime. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe two two, but. We're probably going to see that match Saturday. Yeah. Hopefully. Wow. Yeah. That's all. And those guys, that's a lot for a number one and a number two and a two top 20 guys, arguably in the country to hit. They get hit like we dog. Yeah. They get hit six times. Yeah. They're but most likely they're, they're probably going to hit four, four or five times. Right. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, and yeah, it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, it, it's got to keep battling each other and. You know, like like I said, you know, learn from what we can from a win, learn from a loss, and he's a tough dude, man. He's good. So, you know, we just got to keep making the adjust. You know, learning from each match we wrestle them and make the adjustments if we need to. Use what we did good and keep using it. And you know, it's going to be a battle, though. Those they're 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 tough guys. They like to they love to compete. So it'll be it's fun to watch. Yeah, Aaron knocked off Todd Allen in the Mommy Bay Finals and Ultimate Overtime. <laughs> that was a great match. You know, uh, yep. Allen doesn't break position. Reese no. doesn't break position. And something had to give, and he was able to get it done in overtime in that last ride out. And uh, I like seeing it, man. I like seeing that the Allen guy competes hard. Obviously, Aaron competes hard. Bockler competes hard. I think we got a good crop of heavyweights in all the divisions right now in the state of Ohio. And I, I think your guy might be the pound for pound. I like to see yeah. it. I mean, obviously you got to throw Shoe Law in there because Shoe oh, Law is tough. a complete athlete, and he can he's... probably bump up and compete with all those guys. He's really good. That's... He won the Ironman. So I mean, he's... you got to throw that guy in there when you're talking about all those big heavyweights. But some of them might be too <laughs> big and too much for him. But I don't know, man. The guy's <laughs> he's pretty good. I didn't really get to see him this weekend at St. Edward. Because um, the Del Santer kid did not wrestle. Uh, yeah, I saw but, that. But yeah. I but I'd like to see him. Uh, I'd like to see that guy stack up against some of the guys. Um, you know, I look at um, heavyweight. I always I'm always fascinated by heavyweights because we've had some NFL guys in uh, the state of Ohio, right? Bobby Jones, right? Um, yeah. I think the guy last year, the Ethan Green guy from Fremont Ross, he's a future NFL yeah. guy. Huge. He's six yeah. foot seven. He's been Padilla. I think a lot of these guys have the potential to be uh Jermail Porter was in the NFL for two yeah. seasons. Yeah. So I mean, I, I, I'm excited. I, I I like the heavyweights. I like, you know, Luke Fickle, obviously, right? Like yeah. we've had some amazing heavyweights in the state of Ohio. I mean, it's always a fascinating weight class. And the big thing yeah. is, is Reese a football player? Is football on the table, or is it gonna be one of the top recruits in the the heavyweight class? Uh, yeah. uh, of next year, what what where does he go? Do you know? No, I mean he, he's all Ohio in football on the on the offensive line. So, so he could so he could be a he could be a. There's another guy. Yeah, he oh, just yeah. went to <clears throat> just went to Campbell for a visit actually, with Coach Sentez, and he actually met with wrestling and football there. Oh, they might let him he, do both. They yeah, they're willing to let him do both. Campbell being D two football, but D one wrestling. So, you know, I mean, he he's a he just he's he's wide open right now. You know, talking to him, um, got some really big name calls from D one wrestling, and you know, football is working its way up. You know, more, you know, the Mac schools are kind of there on the cup cuffs for him. So yeah, he's just a competitor. He's a really good kid. He he loves to compete. I mean, he. He loves those matches with Todd Allen and and Faulkner, and he, he steps it up. I mean, he he's when they when that whistle blows, he 
he steps it up in the big match. So he, he is good in that really, really good in the, in the big match. And the, he likes the hype. He likes the, to compete with the best, which is a, I mean, a great quality. So good kid, whatever he does, he, he's going to do well football wrestling, whatever it is, but he puts his time into both and works hard at it. So he's a good, good kid. Three high end guys. There are three state finalist type guys with him, Ernest Reese, Ernest and joy, right? Like, yeah. Who do you look to and who do you look for a breakout state tournament from? Obviously, we're not there yet. I get it. They got to qualify through the qual. But what guys are you looking for to jump levels and get up with those three guys that I just named? Yeah, I th- I, you know, I think we have such a, <clears throat> you know, so many guys, you know, it's going to it's going to be a it's going to be a good district tournament. I think we're going to have a lot of guys that are going to be battling for that that state spot along with Brexville along with Perry we're all going to kind of be in the same boat but I think who comes out of that district is going to be high in the podium and I think that just shows how tough the district is but I mean we got some you know we got freshmen coming along you know um could Caden you know, Mellon do it I saw him he won Caden Mellon won the mommy mommy bench, right yeah won he's coming up match. could that guy yeah. do it could that guy be a breakout guy for you he could be. Yeah, he, he's coming on here. He's figuring it out. His beginning of his year was tough. You know, the weight, figuring the weight out was tough. And now he's he's coming on here. So he's an exciting one. Or, um, at 150, um, Jay Kern, he's a senior. He's kind of been not a guy. He, he went to St. B as sophomore year, then transferred. So we had him half of his junior year. And he, and he did really well. And then we had to sit him, obviously. And now he's he's doing well. I mean, he won the league. He, he beat some good guys in the league tournament. I think he was third at Maumee. Um, Lost to – I'm not sure who exactly – I forget exactly who he lost to. But he, he's kind of a breakout guy, I can see. Um, Nick Humphreys. Nick Humphreys is going yeah, to Nick, – Yeah, Nick's, a, Nick's ready. You know, Nick's going to be a guy right there in the top top part of the the podium and Cohen Graham was fourth last year he's starting to come on he took some early losses but he's starting to come on he's event some of those and so <clears throat> guys are coming on here I, I can't pinpoint one or the other but I just see the guys are starting to start climbing the climbing the ladder here and preparing starting to peak here at, at right when we want them to so which is a good thing. So a really good team. I we can send a lot of guys, or we have a bad weekend could be a bad, you know, a bad thing. So, but that's wrestling, you know. As, that's, that's... as Grim wrestled McPherson to Brexville, and as he wrestled Slaper of St. Edward, and has he had had to heads with those guys yet? Slaper last year at the state tournament, he beat him, but not this year. And McPherson beat him in a duel, but. Grim just beat them nine to two in the league, so that was a big win. So that's, that's another one where those guys are going to see each other yeah, up to yeah. three or yeah, four more a times. A oh. couple more meetings, uh, bananas, dude. So yeah, a couple more meetings with McPherson. Tough kid, Jesus, oh, Pete's young yeah, too. Awesome. Just a yeah, sophomore, super young. Yeah, great. He's going to be a stud. So good for him. But what? yeah, we'll see them about four more times. So uh, that's just crazy. And then, what's the number you guys are going to need to compete for a, a team title this year? Give me a number of qualifiers that's realistic in your mind. Give me yeah. your high end. Give me your low end. Uh, I mean, dude, I think we got. Dude, don't tell me you don't think about this all the time because I know you do. Too much, Deb. I think about it too much. <laughs> that's the problem. You know, you go through the. Oh, what about this, this, and this? I mean, we got to send some big, we got to send a big number down there because Ed, Ed, you know, Ed, you know, Ed's is, Perrysburg is. Um, I think between Brexville, Perry, and us, we're going to, we're going to beat each other up a little bit in that district in Aurora. I mean, a lot of individuals too. I mean, that's just a district's tough. So, yeah, I mean, we need, we need to send a good chunk. And, And I think we can. Um, you know, 
I don't know the exact number we need to send, but I, I know we have a lot of guys that, that can go. And I think we're wrestling good, and I think we can do it. So I think we can put ourselves in a good position. And it's just week by week now. Is you know, double, when it's is week double digits out of the question. Is 10 plus no. qualifiers out of the question. No, I know it's not. I think we can do it. And I think you got, I mean, I think you have to with uh, Perrysburg and Eds and, and, and Brexville and Perry and Dublin. Dublin's fantastic. I mean, oh, Liberty's good. Liberty's rolling. Yeah, we, we I haven't that. brought Liberty up. by Mark Marinelli, who's been a guest on my show. I don't want to slight you, yeah. Mark Marinelli. You're doing a fabulous job. And, and he's awesome. got some depth too. And he's he hey, he's got three three guys who could be in the finals. You know? For sure. We at the GIT and our tournament, they're tough. Yeah. Good, good program, good team. So yeah, I mean it just wrestling as best as we can, you know. So, uh, who who we'll we see. got? We got people up yet? Or are you still are you still the only one awake? <laughs> Well, my wife's coming home from work. Uh oh. And then the dog's barking because she's coming into the house. <laughs> ah, the boss is home. I see it. <laughs> yeah, she's I home. I love that the boss is home. Clay, yeah. um, what's one thing you think people don't know about Wadsworth that they probably should? What's the, what's the one thing about like Wadsworth, Ohio, Wadsworth wrestling, and what you guys have been able to do, you know, since since you were born in the early nineties? Were you born ninety three? Ninety two. 92, yeah. born in 1992. What do you think has changed about Wadsworth or what's the the, the, the the draw to Wadsworth, Ohio that people, and what's something people should know about Wadsworth? Yeah, I would say our, our biggest, biggest thing is just the community, the, the wrestling community. And again, I'll resort back to G, you know, he's built that he's brought, you know, the alumni, he keeps the alumni involved. He keeps, everyone possible that could have a hand in, in Wadsworth wrestling, you know, he makes them a part of it. He makes them feel, um, huge, uh, a big part of that program. And that's from the custodian at the high school to our administration to, you know, a, a, a sponsor or, a, a an old lady that lives across the street. You know, he, he does, he's done a good job with that. And, and he's, taught that to me and you know that's something we carry on you know keeping that wrestling community and the culture um you know fam family family like and i think that's a huge huge piece that we have and people want to be around it you know people want to be a part of it and we we welcome everyone to be a part of it because it's a it's a special thing it's a fun thing and you know a lot of families a lot, a lot of kids a lot of a lot of fun, and, you know, I think that's been a huge piece to it, and we just keep rolling with that. So it, it's fun. Great place to be. I, I always see, you know, there's people I always see around um, who've just been around the program as long as I can remember. Um, obviously, the Squire. I see Scott Squire sometimes, an awesome guy. Straight yeah. shooter, cool, awesome guy like that guy. Uh, Coach Matt, one of your assistant coaches, Coach Matt. What's Coach Matt's last name? I forget. You know? Yeah, that guy's awesome. Great guy. Yeah. He was yeah. at that camp as he was a young assistant coach when you were on the team. Yeah, Coach Hume's an awesome dude. Really good yeah. guy. I saw him at Medina this year. Coach Matt's an awesome dude. He's a great guy. His, his dad was a great coach for Highland back in the back in in the in this maybe seventies. Did Matt go to Wadsworth? No, he went to Highland. And he went. Uh, we won't hold that against him. There. No. Was his um, was, was his so dad? Jesse, he, did his dad coach Jesse Lang? He did. Yep. And uh, yeah, Lang, Todd Hill, um, though that crew, they, it was a real. They had a really good team at that point. His dad was a great coach. Won a lot of league titles. And that guy's an awesome guy. You that that's the type of guy like that guy typifies the loyalty that you have at Wadsworth Wrestling. Does he teach in your district? He does. He's an elementary teacher in our district. Oh my god, that dude's like a unicorn. Do you know how few yeah. uh male elementary school teachers there are? Not many. There's not very many, man. It's it's crazy to think about it. 
I was, I'm teaching about it in my career class. I want to say it's over 90%, over 90% nationwide in the United States of America. I want to get the exact number because I know it's over 90%. My wife actually was like, I think it's over 90%. I need to get the statistic on how many, what the, the male to female ratio is in elementary education. Yeah, he's a second grade teacher. I don't know how many other guys are in the building. There's he's not in. very many. There's like, like uh, even where Ferdinand is, I think there might be one or two. Yeah. It, you know what? He does such a good job. He takes our varsity B around, um, you know, or, or not JV. But they wrestle varsity schedule, but yeah. he puts a lot of time into those guys. And, and that's another piece of our success that when these guys step in the lineup, they're ready to to compete at, at our level, at the level that we have. And it's because they're wrestling that varsity schedule and takes a lot of pride in that. And, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're grateful to have him. He's, he's a good behind the scenes guy with keeping track of the points and helping with the schedule and, um, smart guy. He's very smart uh, with the sport, uh, you know, lineups, looking at lineups, shifting around, you know, he's very smart with the rules and this and, and all that. So, Huge piece. Yeah. Eric Burnett's got a lot of guys like that. You know, I I mean, he's like, yeah. obviously he's got his Jack Gillespie, right? He's got, yeah. got you yeah. need people like that that people don't talk about. They're huge. Yeah. Like, it's crazy because now Greg Irvis is that guy for St. Edward. How wild yeah, is that? Him. That guy still goes and does a bunch of stuff and is a tutor at the school. That, that takes, you Dude need to be, a, you got to be a unreal. humble, you have to be a humble person. Like Matt is a humble person and like he, yeah. would, he wouldn't even want people to know what we're talking about right now. Do you realize that? Right. Right. I think it's nice I to agree. be recognized for things like that, you know, because it, programs like you guys can't do it. Maslin Perry's always <laughs> had guys like that. Look at their coaching staff. They got yeah. humble guys that'll do, they'll do stuff like that. They'll do, they'll mop the mats. They'll plunge toilets, whatever. It, they're just, it's, it's, right. it's humble, man. I like, I think that's what's so great about our sport. It's very humbling. It is. And we have a lot of that. Matt's lucky to have Matt. And he, and he loves to be a part of it. And, you know, that's what – and he coaches every sport, right? He's a football coach. He's a tra- – he loves kids. He loves just to do whatever he can do, you know, and, and he does a good job at it. So we're grateful for him. I he love it. Really, yeah. I love it. It's my favorite. And it's like what he epitomizes Wadsworth wrestling to me. Him and G, that's what I think about. They were there that summer. Um, the, yeah. uh, the four, I believe the four brothers were on those teams with you. Or Derek was just out, maybe. Yeah, Danny for sure. Danny Four was on that team. The Fours, that's another family. The Squires, the Fours. I think about those guys and nothing but fond memories. I like all those people. Oh, uh, you yeah. know, I, just, I really like old man Squire. That dude's cool. Yeah, he's still around. He's a he, cool uh, dude, man. Yeah, he he comes to every. He was at the league tournament, you know, and it's fun, you know, we'll, when we can talk about old stories, going to Burnett's or whatever, you know, whatever it was, taking, going to Tulsa or, you know, whatever the, whatever the story was, you know, but he's a loyal guy. And um, Sam Brandenburg, he. Sam tells, Brandenburg, Shelton, yeah, awesome people, yeah. love them. Nothing Sam's but awesome. great things. Hey, you need those guys. You yeah, need the people behind the scenes who will who will run a tournament, who will make sure mats yeah. are rolled up and mopped and whatever. I just we don't have enough of that, man. And you need those, you need all those moving parts. And you know this, yeah. you're figuring this out. You saw G do it. To build a program, you just need so many selfless people. And I like yeah. I think the blue collar people, and I'm you know, I'm from a blue collar family. I just think blue collar people are just a different, different breed of humans. And I just, yeah. And it's awesome. It, <clears throat> yeah. And that's what the Brandenburgs are. And yeah. Same wires. Squires. You know, just... Every, literally everybody we've talked about. Yeah. They're workers. They're workers. You I know, Sam done for us now. And it's just great people, you know, and I love it. Yeah. I they, love it. That's what's fun about coaching having those kind of people to have relationships with, you know, so it's awesome. Yeah, it is. I love it. Has it been as easy as you thought as it was going to be? <laughs> yeah, it's good. <laughs> there's good, there's hard times and, and easy, but it's fun. You know, I, I, I like, 
it's tough. Yeah, it's tough, there's man. A lot, a lot to it, but it, it's it's fun. It, it's you know what you expect. I love it. All right, do you have anything else for me? You have anything no, else that- I missed? I love talking to you, Grizzlies. Grizzlies yeah. put Gri- Grizzlies put four in the finals and turn some heads and walk away with some type of trophy from the state tournament. I wouldn't mind calling that. That wouldn't bother me. No, me either. It, wouldn't, it wouldn't upset me. I wouldn't I wouldn't be upset. I wouldn't be mad. And I know no. that it wouldn't even grind some of your opponents' gears because they know how hard you guys are working over there. And yeah. uh, just west of Akron and I love it, man. Um yeah. next year's GIT, I gotta get back to that tournament. It's a great yeah, tournament. I'll get you. Yeah, we're we'll figure we're some out. It together now. Yeah, we'll get it done. We're we, I love we, it. We have to have you there, so we'll get it done. All right, state duels. Mark Neiman and Son will be covering the state duels for Ohio Cast. Obviously, all the action packed D one teams that like to beat each other up five times, six times a year <laughs> will be competing. Yeah, uh, you know, obviously your semifinal with uh, your potential semifinal with Brexville is obviously marked on the calendar for Coach Neiman to talk it up and get you guys in a an awesome light so people can see the highest level high school wrestling. Coach yeah. Wenger, I appreciate you. Go Grizzlies. Thank you for the time. And I just appreciate Thanks, you coming man. on, man. All right? Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate you. All right, buddy. Stick around for a little bit. All right. Thanks, Ab. Yes, sir.